packing it up will be the last one. They're in the gate. And they're off. Discretionary day out quickly, along with four flag in the center of the course. Mystic Flyer is up close, too. Mystic Flyer now takes the lead. Hacking it up is on the pace. Now moving up to claim third. Dos Vicios in the black colors and Talk Less, Work More settles in mid-pack, about five lengths off the lead. They're followed by California Bay, racing on the inside of Syntactic. It's another couple of lengths to the next flight. Bravestone, Don't Think, Just Do It, and three more lengths to Alpine Thunder. They string out over close to 20 lengths and down the back stretch with Mystic Flyer, leading by a length and a half, discretionary day, moves to his outside to engage. He's tugging pretty hard, too. Four flag at the rail, hacking it up is right next to him. Dos Vicios, fifth, and about three lengths off the lead with less than a half mile to go. Talk Less, Work More is down at the rail. He's followed by Bravestone and California Bay. Syntactic is next. Alpine Thunder out of last. And don't think, just do it. Mystic Flyer is the leader over discretionary day, a half length back in second. Bravestone is making a wide bid. He's on the outside of hacking it up. Four flag is next. Talk less, work more. Has six to make up. Down at the rail there at the top of the stretch. Discretionary day. Hacking it up is coming gamely. In the center of the course, here's California Bay finishing with a flourish. And California Bay in the white blinkers is coming fast. California Bay let loose under Tiago Pereira. Runs by them all. Discretionary day holds second over Bravestone. Four flag was next, and it's a photo for fifth. California Bay let loose under Tiago Pereira. Runs by them all. Discretionary day holds second over Bravestone. Four flag was next, and it's a photo for fifth. Coffee in bed, keen lady to the outside. And they're off. Very smooth beginning. Vidalera, liberal lady, blue wildcat matching strides at the top pair into the first turn. And Cliquish is caught four wide. Coffee in bed hugs the rail and inches a little bit forward. The early trailer is keen lady. They're covered by four lengths with six and a half furlongs to go. And it's Blue Wildcat emerging with the lead by a length. Vidalera is racing in between rivals and Liberal Lady outside of them. Coffee in bed is only three lengths off the lead now. Passing Cliquish and another two back to Keen Lady. They swing on to the backstretch. Blue Wildcat, three quarters of a length. Vidalera in second under a hold. And on the outside of her comes Liberal Lady. Just a half length off the top pair. Coffee in bed is down on the inside. The heavy favorite is two lengths off the lead with less than a half mile to go. Cliquish outside of her and Keen Lady. Still compact into the far turn, three-eighths of a mile to run. And it's Blue Wildcat head and head with Vita Lara. Liberal Lady moves up willingly on the outside, just a head away. Cliquish will go four wide. Coffee in bed looking for a seam, finding it now as Blue Wildcat opens the door for Coffee in bed. Coffee in bed has to get to Cliquish, who got the jump. Coffee in bed hugs the rail under extremely confident handling, though. And Coffee in bed is the leader with an eighth of a mile to go. Cliquish took a shot, but Coffee in bed strutting her stuff and is too classy. It's going to be Coffee in bed. Just handwritten, asked to finish it up, and does so by three lengths. Cliquish was second, liberal lady third, photo for fourth to Keen Lady. They're in the gate. And they're off. 
Rugula is out very quickly. Annie's Joy in the center of the course. Here's Jordan moving through in between rivals to go and put pressure on the favorite. Court Snort is about five lengths off the lead. Precocious Times is next. Rough Ride, who broke inward, is now toward the back of the field. First time in forever is racing on the outside of her. And it's another two lengths to the trailer, Noki. Around the first turn, and it's Rugelach showing the way by a length and a half. Jordan is second by two. Then Annie's Joy by herself third. Three lengths back to Precocious Times as they string out. Another three and a half or so back to Court Snort who is followed by Rough Ride inside first time in forever and Noki. Juan Hernandez and the favorite Rugelach goes past the half mile pole with a two length advantage. Jordan in second still, the same for Annie's Joy third. Precocious Times is fourth, now seven lengths off the lead. It's another three back to Court Snort and passing that one is first time in forever. A three wide Rough Ride and Noki has trailed throughout. Rugelach with a quarter of a mile to go has a two length advantage. Racing in second now is Annie's Joy trying to take up the chase and precocious times angles out for the drive. First time in forever and rough rod. Rugelach under siege now. Here's Annie's Joy up to engage and precocious times in the center of the race course. Annie's Joy lengthens stride to overhaul Rugelach close to home and it's going to be Annie's Joy. Annie's Joy out finishes Rugelach. Then it was precocious times in third. Three-way photo for the rest among first time in forever, Rough Ride and Noki. Y.com. That's Y-A-A-M-A-V-A dot com. They're in the gate. And they're off. Carol's comic broke alertly. Log on to win in the center is quick. Here's Lonesome Stew now coming through. And Lonesome Stew takes the lead. Red Falcon is now battling for second with Log on to win currently third. They're followed by Lord Tripping. Torleaf with the white and blue is about three lengths off the lead as they head toward the half mile and past it now. California Tiger in the red has emerged up to third. Carol's Comic, who broke well, is next. And the distant trailer is the last one perk. It's Lonesome Stew, three furlongs from home, leading it by two. California Tiger and Red Falcon are second and third together with Log On to win in fourth. Carol's Comic next with a quarter of a mile to run. And Lonesome Stew goes on very willingly. Three length lead now over California Tiger. Make it four coming to the eighth bowl. And it's Lonesome Stew all alone indeed. Lonesome Stew and Tyler Bays by eight lengths with a 16th of a mile to go. No match was California Tiger who will settle for second. Lonesome Stew jogs. California Tiger second. Carol's Comic third. Photo fourth. Close between Red Falcon and Logon to win. They're in the gate. They're off. Very nice beginning for Abois on the far outside, headed now by Thermal. And so the two favorites go quickly. Ufta, close up third, moving up now to claim the second spot. Then it's Certitude, racing one from the rail. Down at the rail, Ahmed Joker is about five lengths off the lead. Then Lahar blockade now in front of that rival, as is Discrepancy, three quarters back to Beads, who's toward the back of the field followed by Laudatory and Just for Fun. They move into the far turn, and Thermal, doing it easily thus far, has it by two lengths over Ufta in second. They're followed by Avoir, who's down on the inside third. It's another three back to Certitude, a joint fourth, racing inside Discrepancy, followed by Beads and Lahar Blockade. They turn for home, and Thermal has been the controlling speed, cuts the corner nicely, and is in full flight. And it's Thermal in front by four lengths. 
Ufta is still in second, trying hard, followed by Avoir. Past the 16th pole, and Thermal took control early and waved goodbye. Thermal, an easy win. Second to Ufta. Then it was Avoir in third. Laudatory started finishing with some nice interest late, and then came Beads. Ferociously. And they're off. All the King's men is very quick. So is Spiritus. Tahoe's secrets in between those two. Ferociously is on the extreme outside. Stafford to Cup is now moving through to challenge for the lead. And down at the rail, Cathedral Light is only two lengths off the pace. Then New York Dreams, too much info, second to last, and missed call trails. They run down the back stretch, and it's ferociously just in front of all the King's men. Those two are head and head. Spirit is coming after them in third. Then it's New York Dreams, Stafford to Cup dropping back. Tahoe Secrets on the outside. A length more, too much info in the yellow, making a wide bid. The two trailers, Cathedral Knight, missed call, trying to pick it up from behind. They turn for home, and it's ferociously the new leader. Opens up two and a half lengths. On the extreme outside, too much info continues to finish. New York Dreams is next. Final furlong ferociously, and too much info. All the King's men is in third ferociously by two and a half lengths. Too much info grinding away, but it's ferociously, ferociously a big overlay. Wins by two. Too much info was second. All the King's men third in front of Spiritist and Cathedral Knight in the battle for fifth with New York Dream. They're in the gate, and they're off. Eloro is out quickly. Liberty Forever is coming through swiftly, though, and Liberty Forever takes command. Eloro is now racing in second. They're followed by Hogmanay. King Apollo is racing in between rivals, and down at the rail, XJ Rascal is eager, and he's going right after the front runner, coming to his inside as they pass the half-mile pole. Daniel's Magic is down on the inside of horses. It's another couple of lengths. Back to Delmar Jerry, who's toward the back of the field, along with Beige and Arma de Oro. They're coming toward the quarter pole, and now XJ Rascal has come through to challenge Liberty Forever. Those two are 1-2. Daniel's Magic in third, El Oro racing in fourth. Hogmanay looking for racing room behind horses. Rutherford is down on the inside. And on the extreme outside, King Apollo tries to get a clear path. In the meantime, Daniel's Magic has come through to take the lead. Opens up to King Apollo is storming down the center of the course, coming with nice strides. Daniel's Magic, three-length lead, though. And it's Daniel's Magic holding on. Daniel's Magic and Umberto Rispoli to win it by a length. King Apollo was second. Beige rallied late for third, followed by Delmar Jerry and XJ Rascal. The favorite, more tequila, will be the last one to load. They're in the gate, and they're off. Perfect start. Escape route is out very alertly. Between rivals, Kingdom Heart now up to take the lead. And down at the rail, here's Good with People taking second, more tequila third. And Escape Route will settle fourth after breaking on top with four to make up. Desmond Doss is down at the rail. KP Quest is next and Lovesick Blues on the outside. Kingdom Heart, speeding clear, has a three-length lead over Good With People second. More Tequila settles nicely third, five lengths off the pacemaker. 
Then Desmond Doss asked to pick it up, racing on the inside with about three-eighths of a mile to go. The lead belongs to Kingdom Heart. Good with people. More tequila trying to close in now from third. Has about three lengths to make up. Escape route is next. Down at the rail, Desmond Doss, Love Sick Blues rallying a touch outside of them. KP Quest far back, top of the stretch. And good with people has overhauled Kingdom Heart and opens up. And it's good with people. Desmond Doss is finishing with a bit of interest, as is Escape Route, a 16th to go. Good with people, two-length lead, looking for the wire. Here's Escape Route flying late. Good with people. Pulls off the upset. An oncoming Escape Route, along with Lovesick Blues, Desmond Dawes. Present moment is a little restless. They're in the gate, and they're off. Hamwood Flyer is going out to battle for the early lead. Unbridled Mary has some early foot, too, and Eddie's new dream well spotted at the rail in third. Freedom Flyer is fourth. Then Ankura racing in fifth, mid-pack, a length and a half back. Una Chiquitita and present moment are racing right together. That pair is followed by Lucky Girl, and it's another length and a half back to the trailer, Oakhurst. Around the clubhouse turn, and the loose leader is Hamwood Flyer. She's opened up about five lengths. Unbridled Mary is second by four. Then Freedom Flyer and Eddie's new dream racing right together. Ankira is on the outside next, inching a little forward with present moment racing between rivals. Una Chiquitita is next. And then it's another length back to Lucky Girl in Oakhurst. No turning back for Hamwood Flyer, who has that huge lead. It's more than six. Unbridled Mary second by the same margin. Freedom Flyer is racing in third, coming toward the quarter pole. And it's Hamwood Flyer's lead shrinking rapidly now. Unbridled Mary poised to pounce on her. And Freedom Flyer picking up some pieces on the outside. Unbridled Mary comes to take the lead. Eddie's new dream is trying to angle off the fence as Lucky Girl starts to kick into high gear. Eddie's new dream dives down toward the rail. 16th to go. Freedom Flyer got the jump. Lucky Girl, Eddie's new dream. Lucky Girl on the outside or Freedom Flyer. Lucky Girl got up. Freedom Flyer was second. Photo for third, Unbridled Mary. And another photo, Eddie's new dream and Oakhurst from last.
Hi, everybody, and welcome to the beautiful paddock gardens here at the Great Race Place, Sandy. To Close to 90 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, which means, of course, the track is fast and the turf is firm. I'm Tom Quigley, your seminar host for the next 35 minutes. Seated alongside me, the agent for jockey Diego Herrera, his name, Ryan Casado. Ryan, happy Saturday. Welcome to the seminar. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining me. Now, a question for you. How did you and Diego hook up? Well, uh, one evening this past summer at Del Mar, I received a text. I uh, didn't know who the number was, but he said, Hey, Ryan, uh, heard it was your birthday. It was just my birthday the night before. Um, if you might be, you might be busy, but give me a call when you're free. So sure. told him I was out to dinner that night. I'd reach out to him the next morning. I did. Things went well com on the conversation over the phone, and that's how it happened. The rest is history. So that happened basically in mid-August. And one of my favorite uh, aspects of any jockey is a jockey that will try. And there's certainly one example. There's probably many examples, but I wanted to show one example of Diego never giving up. It was back on September 16th at Los Alamitos. It was the first race. It was a horse trained by Craig Lewis by the name of Gentleman's Club. This is a two-year-old making his third lifetime start. He's going to break from post position number six. I'm going to give you the end of the story. He actually gets up to win. You're not going to believe me when we watch the replay because he was basically last mid-stretch at Los Alamitos. But let's listen to track announcer Michael Rona call the action for Gentleman's Club, ridden by Diego Herrera. All set, racing. Halo Uncle away sharply with beer money, followed by Mr. Big Bucks and Ballymun. Gentlemen's Club getting back three lengths last, only a length covering the other four runners. It's Halo Uncle on the inside, beer money the widest. Mr. Big Bucks joining them in the middle. Ballymun right in behind them, fourth, and five or six lengths to Gentlemen's Club. Half a mile left to go. Halo Uncle with the lead, half a length to Mr. Big Bucks, followed wider by beer money. Ballymun drafting in behind them, fourth, is now three lengths off the lead. He's losing ground on the leading trio mid-race. Well clear of Gentleman's Club to the 516s pole. Mr. Big Bucks in the middle of this line of three. Out deeper to Beer Money. Halo Uncle is hanging tough along the rail as they swing for home. And Mr. Big Bucks, the first to feel the whip in the middle as Beer Money, the first time starter, moves into the lead at the 316s pole. And Beer Money for Maldonado kicks a length in front of Mr. Big Bucks. Another length to Halo Uncle. Third, well clear of Gentleman's club 16th to go beer money with mr big bucks coming again it's beer money about a head in front of mr big bucks and halo uncles even re-rallying and gentlemen's club is flying and man, i think he beat them all gentlemen's club from absolutely out of the clouds in a four-way photo with beer money halo uncle and mr big bucks Ryan Gentleman's Club had one horse beat at the 16th pole, as you heard track announcer Michael Rona describe. There's not many jocks that would carry on with what Diego did in terms of trying to get up to win. That had to put a smile on your face and Craig Lewis's face. Oh, absolutely. Craig and I talked after the race and we saw each other the next morning and we both just laughed. We said we didn't think there was a chance in the world he was going to get up, but he did. And it just shows how Diego's persistence um, – is a huge benefit to his riding. You talked about his persistence. What are some other positive qualities you've seen about him in the short time you've had a relationship with him? The acceptance of criticism on rides. He doesn't want to be told what a good job he does. He wants to be talked to after a ride that may be so-so. He wants to be told, you know, ways to improve his riding. He's very willing to learn, which I think is great. His work ethic never complains in the mornings, willing to work as many as we have. Um, those are those are the two biggest things that I've seen so far, but love is attitude. The attitudes that Ryan just described for Diego Herrera also apply to our seminar guest, Ryan Casado. We're going to find out who Ryan likes on today's extravaganza 11 race card beginning early at 1230 p.m. Pacific time. But before we do any of that, let's toss the microphone over to track announcer Frank Miramati and get the early changes on today's Saturday's card here at Santa Anita. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Santa Anita Park. The track is fast, the turf firm, the rail on the turf at 20 feet. Here are the early changes. In the first, number five, Blonde Bombshell, make the jockey Kyle Frey. In addition to the program scratch of number 10, scratch the also eligibles 13 and 14. 
In the second, number four, Arctic Breeze, one pound over. Scratch number six, Flynn's Chance. No scratches or jockey changes in race number three. Just a blinker note again in race four. In the fifth, we will have a middle pick four today. Middle pick four in races five, six, seven, and eight. Number five, Feisty Matoli, one pound over. The six starts the $1 pick six on races six through 11. A couple of blinker notes. The seventh is the California Distaff Handicap. Number one, Organic, one pound over. Four, Chismosa, two pounds over. In the eighth race, no changes. In the ninth, scratch number five, Aurelian Man. Number five, Aurelian Man is out of race number nine. In the tenth race, no scratches or jockey changes. And in the eleventh, scratch number nine, Perfectionistic. The $3 all-turf pick three is offered today on races 7, 9, and 11. It starts with the 7th, the California Distaff Handicap. Enjoy your day at Santa Anita Park. Post time for the first is in 58 minutes at 12.30. Right now we go back to the seminar with Tom Quigley at Quigley's Corner. His guest today is Ryan Casado. Welcome back. We're talking horses with Ryan Casado. He's the jockey agent for Diego Herrera. Diego has six mounts on today's 11 race card. His morning line odds range from three to one up to eight to one. So he certainly appears on paper to at least have a lot of live mounts. Before we get your uh, discussions and picks on uh, today's 11 race card, Ryan, a question for you. Your dad is the well known and famed jockey agent, Nick Casado. He handled the book for many Hall of Famers, including Corey Nakatani, Garrett Gomez, Michael Bays, et cetera, et cetera. But he made a pact with you because he knew that you liked the racetrack. You would always follow him around. He said to you, you go to college and you graduate. And then once you graduate, you can do whatever you want. So you did go to college, Arizona State. You did graduate, yeah. but you came back to the racetrack. Why is that? Well, it's always been my passion. I grew up around it my whole life, played sports growing up, but I fell in love with basketball, which I played from six years old throughout high school. But eventually there was a ceiling for me and that was it. So I think my competitive nature gravitated towards horse racing. I mean, I'd, I'd loved it my whole life, but I spent more time growing up with basketball. Um, my dad steered me away. No, I don't want you to do it. Absolutely not. But he made a deal. If I went to college and got my degree, he'd support me in horse racing with whatever I decided to do. So he uh, kept his word. Is he your harshest critic or does he kind of leave you alone? No, he speaks. He speaks up when he feels he needs to with things. He definitely is willing to critique, but he's not not one to give me feedback, you know, daily. It, it varies. We want you to speak up because we want your opinion on all 11 races today, Ryan. And we kick things off here in race number one, going one mile the turf course. The rails today on the turf course are at 20 feet. Also, race one begins the popular 50 cent early pick five. This race is for $32,000 claimers, fillies and mares, non-winners of two races lifetime. Program scratch of the 10. Also take out the two also eligibles. 13 and 14 will not compete. Number five, Blonde Bombshell will, will now be ridden by Kyle Frey, the morning line favorite in the current betting choice from the Peter Erden barn is number nine. In your face, who is currently two to one on the board. This is the first of your six months here. The other runner uh, trained by Peter Erden, number 11 magazine. Before we get your uh, picks and thoughts on the race, tell us what you know about magazine. First off the claim for Mr. Erden. I know that Pete says she's been working well. We worked her once since she's been claimed. Um, She's going to get to try turf and uh, two turns for the first time today. Not she certainly bred for it. Correct. She's already gone two turns, but turf for two turns will be the first time. So that's going to be something new. She's bred for it. And Pete says she's training well. So there were two claims in last time. You can see claim for 16. Now Peter jumps her up to 32. You're, of course, a team player. So you're going to put her on top. But who do you think is her main competition in race one, Ryan? I feel the other Erton is. What I like about her is she's been pretty consistent if you throw out that last race. 
the race before that, she was second at a mile. The race before that, she broke her maiden. And the race before that, she ran seventh. And the one before that, she was second. So you take her mile turf races. Outside of the one seventh place finish, she's been second by a head, winner, and second. She gets back to that mile distance today. She teams up with Juan, the leading rider. I think she's going to be pretty tough, get a good trip. You mentioned Diego's been on the back of magazine in the morning. How often does he come out and work horses in the morning? Is it a daily occurrence? Pretty much. Tuesdays they have off since the tracks close, but he's pretty much got at least one or two every morning. Saturdays and Sundays are the busiest. Race number two begins the 50 cent early pick four. This race is also a mile, but this race is on the main track. It's for two year old fillies made in special weights. Scratch the six leaves us with a field of five. Nothing like you from the Bob Baffert barn is the nine to five morning line favorite. According to John White, how do you see this race? According to Ryan Casado, I took a chance with the six here. No, six scratched. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I had her on top. Uh, the two would be my second choice then coming out of the same race. She ran against Tamara, who's, probably your likely Breeders Cup juvenile Philly favorite um, showed speed in that race. She's getting to stretch on the dirt for the first time today, which I like. Um, I think that she'll probably be forwardly placed and I think she's going to be a fair price. I think the five is probably going to be heavily bet. So Ryan's a brave man trying to beat Mr. Baffert. Nothing like you first time routing. She's out of a dam. Who's a multiple stakes winner around two turns. So certainly the breeding is there, but her buyer speed figures certainly have not been that impressive up to this point. Before we take a look at race number three, Ryan, a question for you. I believe, and maybe you agree or disagree that most jockey agents have to be solid, rock solid handicappers. If that's true. And if you believe that, what type of handicapper are you like? What do you do? do in terms of trying to identify live mounts for Diego? Well, if you have th the first thing is if you have two options in the race, then that's where it really becomes beneficial. If you don't have any decision to make, then you got to take what you're dealt. But it def handicapping does play a huge key in, you know, decision making when you have multiple offers or if, you know, a trainer comes to you and says, hey, are there any races? Knowing the right race to run in, maybe some trainers don't. They they know where they want to go, but others look to to agents to maybe uh, help them out a little bit. You not only have to be a good handicapper, but you also have to know how to read the condition book. The second condition book is out. You're already looking ahead, basically, to the end of the meet, and maybe even Delmar in terms of lining up mounts for Diego. Correct. Yeah, I mean horses that have run or that you've won on recently. You got to look ahead. You know, three, four, five weeks down the line, where might they be going next? Race number three, we're back on the turf course. This time the distance is a mile and an eighth for Maiden Special Weights, a field of seven. There are three first-time Gellings. Number three, my partner Glenn. Number four, Hula Candy. And number five, Smooth Salute. Are all first-time Gellings today. The Morning Line favorite, who is dropping down from an allowance uh, allowance condition races into the main ranks, is number six, Legislator from the Peter Miller Barn at six to five. You ride an interesting horse here, Ryan. That's number one, Pie Pinehurst, who's a first-time Lasix user. Hasn't been seen in over a year. First time in the United United States finished a good second uh, last time when seen in Ireland. Have you been on uh, this gelding's back over at Los Alamitos or even here at San Nita? We have not, but we're happy to be aboard today. I can imagine you ride for Phil D'Amato. You should be happy. Absolutely. What do you know about Pinehurst? I know not very much, to be honest. Um, I know that he hasn't run in a little over a year. Um, I know that Phil's very good with Euros. I love the first time Lasix, first time in the country. He's 17% with first time with him and first time in the country, ironically enough. But um, I think he, I think outside of the six, who's run two very good races since joining Pete Miller's barn, I think the race is wide open. When you talk about Phil D'Amato, don't forget about Mrs. D'Amato, who trains a string over at Los Alamitos. She does an excellent job as well. Getting the runners ready, Ryan sees race three as one six six one. Race number four, we're sprinting six furlongs in the main track for Calbred. Allowance optional claiming types, non-winners of one other than. We've got a field of six, the morning line favorite. Uh, odds on, as a matter of fact, is number five, Super Chief, who's taking blinkers off. Four to five on John White's morning line. The good news, bad news is Super Chief is the one to beat. The bad news is you lost the mount to Juan Hernandez. Forgetting about this spe uh, specific example, Ryan, how do you kind of manage that emotionally, both yourself personally and Diego, particularly if this horse winds up in the winner's circle? How do you guys manage that? You know, it, it hurts when you get taken off a horse, but it's part of the game. Um, we had our shot. We rode the horse three times since he had broken his maiden. We broke his maiden and he won. He ran second three consecutive times. And, you know, whether it was racing luck or just wasn't his day, we we didn't get lucky. We The horse ran well. We just 
didn't get our picture taken and the connections decided to make a change. So we, we wish we were riding them today, obviously, but it's part of the game and you got to just take it. And Tapatia Leo, Leo, who won uh, that race back on September 10th, came back again to win and earn a buyer speed figure of 89. So that 81 that Super Chief earned back on September 10th certainly looks uh, legitimate. All right. Although you lost the mount, who do you like in race four and why, Ryan? I think Super Chief should be ultra tough against this bunch today. Pick five single, perhaps? Yes, definitely. Okay. If there is a, a competitor in race four, who might it be? I'd say his biggest competition is probably the rail. The horse didn't run great his last two races, but his race before that at Del Mar, he ran well, was up close near the pace. I'm thinking that might be the key today. Um, I think from the rail, you kind of have to send. So I think, I think Super Chief, again, is going to be very tough. But if anyone's to beat him, I could see Ramon sending from the rail and maybe taking him wire. You talk, wire. You, Ryan, you talked about uh, Saturday and Sunday being the busiest days for workouts. Did you work any runners today and anybody of note that maybe we can look at uh, for down the road? Uh, yes, we worked five today. Um, there was a couple that are probably worth mentioning, but I got to get clearance before I say anything. So <laughs> we'll look on the work tab and watch on xptv.com. But it's good to hear that at least you think you have a couple live ones in the mix. Definitely. Race number five begins the special 50 cent middle pick four on 10 and 11 race cards here at Santa Anita, which is what we offer today. We do offer a 50 cent middle pick four, and that'll kick off in race number five, sprinting six furlongs in the turf course for maiden special weight, two year old Phillies, a talented field of nine. The Maury line favorite, the second time starter, number two, respect the crown from the Jeff Mullins barn. But here's another D'Amato horse that you that you ride, uh, Ryan. Number three, Ellie Moore, who we haven't seen it since, uh, uh, I believe, August at Del Mar. Be odds on beaten favorite, basically one to two that day. Before we get your thoughts on the race, let's watch a workout courtesy of our friends at XBTV.com for Ellie Moore. This was a team drill back on October 18th. She's going to be on the inside, and her workmate is a runner by the name of Standy No, who's a two-time winner also trained by Phil D'Amato. First question for you, Ryan, is were you on Ellie Moore this morning back on October 8th? No. You were not. Now, have you watched this replay before? I have, yes. Okay, good. So, Stanny No, you know, is a very talented horse, and Elio is flashing a lot of early speed. Uh, I, don't know what you, I don't know what you know about that first-time effort in the United States back in August, but based on this workout, mm -hmm. when Stanny No and Ellie Moore basically finish heads up at the wire, mm -hmm. I think this is a very, very uh, productive type of work to get her ready for today. I agree. She, uh, she certainly is doing nothing wrong, and she's got every right to improve. Today is just going to be her third lifetime start. I should point out, as we're continuing to watch the workout, when she got beat in Ireland on debut on April 16th, the winner of that debut, who she finished second to, came back to win two grade threes as of August 6th. So she certainly was keeping good company in Ireland. That's probably why she got so heavily bet in August down at Del Mar, and now she reappears today. This has to be one of your better mounts, in my opinion, on today's card, and she's a juicy four to one. Correct. And and funny you mentioned Porta Fortuna, which I do think is why she was bet so heavily because of Porta, Porta Fortuna coming back to win after that race. She's actually won a grade one since then, the other two graded stakes that you listed. Well, so. there you go. Breaking news. Now, I scream, you, I, I scream, you scream. Uh, number six is a first time starter, also from the Phil D'Amato barn, owned by our friends at Little Red Feather. Have you heard any whispers in the morning about I scream, you scream, if, if she has any ability? You know, I haven't heard anything, but. Well, that means she's probably live. Probably so when you don't. <laughs> <Trying to keep laughs> <the secret. laughs> right. But what I do like about her are two gate works. She worked 59 flat on September 30th. And then two weeks before that, she worked a half mile and 46 and four out of the gate. So her two gate works were fast enough to earn the bullet. Usually with first time starters, I like to see, you know, fast gate works. It shows they got speed. And I like her pedigree for the turf sprinting. So. There's, there's no script for this seminar. We kind of stumbled on this topic, Ryan, but how, how do you kind of weed your way through racetrack rumors in terms of ability, non-ability? You're probably the, uh, the recipient of unbelievable countless, you know, rumors. How do you kind of weed through it and, you know, try and try and figure it all out? One, I think you got to give whoever you're getting the information from a few times to build their track record and you determine, okay, how's their information? And you kind of, handicap it yourself too you can't bet everything you're told um but there's certain people that you know when you hear something from you you make note your ears pick up a little bit definitely let's see if you can pick up your ears in race number six that's because it's the first leg of the one dollar pick six and we kick it off sprinting five and a half furlongs in the main track for maiden claimers twenty thousand dollars is the claiming tag 
One first time Gelly, number four, 50 Cinco from the Mike Pipey Barn. The morning line favorite drawn right inside of him is number three, Chaos Reigns. Five to two, according to John White. Chaos Rain takes blinkers, or excuse me, puts blinkers on. You have a mount in this race, and it's number nine, uh, Hab Habeas from the Keith Cragmile Barn. You and Diego and Keith have done very well with limited opportunities. Before we get your thoughts on the race, let's watch Habeas's last effort. It was at the fourth race at Los Alamitos back on September 23rd. He showed a tremendous amount of early speed. He ran great that day at six furlongs. Today's distance is five and a half. Let's listen to Michael Rona describe the action. Now five to two for South Coast route. Set. Racing. Eagles Landing pings out of the gate, leads from Habeas and Seabreeze Boy, followed closely by King Zog and Mount Zorora's thrusting forward. Nyquilla and the Bright Limes going up out very wide on the track. South Coast route blending into midfield, going up toward the half mile pole. Habeas leads a half length from Seabreeze Boy, followed after a length and a half by Nyquilla outside Eagles Landing. They're followed out very deep on the track by Real Thirsty, six lengths off the pace. Between horses comes South Coast route. King Zog getting up on their inside. I got a guy, Barton Strong, a long way back. Cryptoholics very wide with five sixteenths to go. Mount Zoror has become lost in the wash. And uh, he's one of the last as they swing for home. Reef City Rearwoods also 3 sixteenths to travel and Habeas has kicked away by two and a half lengths from Eagles Landing. Five lengths to the rest. Barton Strong finishing well between horses. South Coast Rooters next, but to the 16th pole, it's Habeas with one danger. It's Eagles Landing looming large. Eagles Landing throws down the gauntlet to Habeas. Takes the lead and Eagles Landing beats Habeas. Three clear from Barton Strong and South Coast Root work and earned a buyer speed figure of 80 on this particular afternoon at Los Alamitos. If he duplicates that effort, he's going to be tough in here. I'm sure he's your top pick. You had to be disappointed that he lost, but very proud that he ran basically a winning race. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's one. We watched Gentleman's Club at the beginning of the show. I didn't think there was a chance he was going to win habeas at the eighth ball. I thought he was home. So that's horse racing. It sure is. The connections uh, originally paid $450,000 at auction. Obviously he's not that type of horse, but I do mm -hmm. think he's live today. Yes. If habeas were to get beat. Who do you think is his main competition in race six, Ryan? You know, I'm, I'm going to take a chance with the seven take action, a horse that's never run on the dirt before. <laughs> He's dropping to the bottom of the maiden claiming ranks today. Mandela's 29% with those types. He goes to the bug, gets the weight off. And I think the price is going to be fair. He's going to be somewhere, you know, in that probably four to one to six to one range would be my guess. And I'm willing to take a shot. The 80 buyer speed figure that Habeas earned sticks out like a sore thumb in the field. But I do yes. believe that the buyer speed figure for number three, Chaos Reigns, might be understated. Here's the reason why. That race on September 24th, excuse me, September 4th, was probably the most productive race at Del Mar all season long. There's been seven next out winners out of that race that Chaos Reigns ran in, including the top two finishers who came back to earn buyer speed figures of 86 and 99. So certainly I think Chaos Reigns deserves a long look with blinkers on and the switch over to jockey Umberto Rispoli. Race number seven is our feature race on today's card. It's the California Distaff Handicap coming down the hillside turf course for Calbred, Phillies and Mares. Also race seven begins the 50 cent late pick five, as well as the new $3 all turf pick three that links our last three races on every card. All I should say all our final three turf races on every card. And it's a new wager always pays well because of the $3 minimum. And the first leg is here in race number seven. The high weight at 124 pounds is number six. Rose Maddox, one of two owned by owner Nick Alexander. Morning line favorite is one of those. Number five, Rose Dawson at two to one. You do ride Clean Karma, though. Here's another race. If we had time, we would go back and watch the replay. We don't. But Clean Karma, Diego never gave up that particular afternoon last time out on August 18th and got the job done at 26 to one. Do you think he's going to be able, do you think she's going to be able to do, do it today with the cutback and distance? She's, she's a Philly that I think loves the down the hill, even though she doesn't have a ton, ton of wins at the, at the distance. Um, I think she likes the six and a half. It plays more to like a mile. Mm -hmm. I think she's one that if she gets pace today, she's going to fire big, but she's kind of dependent on the pace. If she doesn't get a fast enough pace to close into she, it's going to be tough for her. your key word was if, if she gets the pace, do you think there's a lot of pace in here? Or do you think it could be soft early? Uh, I mean, 50, 50 for me. I, I know the one's got to go. And if anyone goes with her, I think we could get a 
fast enough pace. If it's just going to be the one, I think it's probably going to be a little slower than her liking. And, and number one, organic, a big 10 to one on John White's morning line, who could be loose on the lead, has improved certainly since taking blinkers off three races back. If uh, if Clean Karma doesn't win, we see that you like number uh, six, I believe, or number five, excuse me, number right. five, Rose right. Dawson. It's hard to see <laughs> with the glare up here. Why do you like a Rose Dawson other than that the leading rider jumps on board? <laughs> Well, I liked her race at Los Al last time, even though it was over the main track. I thought it was very impressive for the level, ultra, ultra easy. Um, and I think she's a filly that's going to get a good trip. I think she's going to be sitting second or third just off the leaders, and I think she's going to be first to pounce. Let's turn the page, take a look at race number eight, sprinting six furlongs of the main track for fillies and mares. $12,500 is the claiming level. We've got, uh, we have also beginning the 50 cent late pick four here in race number eight. A big field of 10 in the morning line. Favorite number three, a new piece from the Mike Pipey barn. Five to two on the morning line. You don't have a mountain here, so you're not pot committed to anybody per se. You're just going to put your handicapping hat on. Who do you like in race eight and why, Ryan? I'd love to give you a huge bomb and give you a reason why, but I really think it's going to be hard to beat the three in here. Um, her last two races have been, in my opinion, good enough to win this race. Uh, the Philly that beat her last time, Indy stars, a hard knocking Philly of Leonard Powell's who would probably be odds on in here. I think the three, if she gets the same type of trip as last time, she's going to be tough. Now we're looking at the graphic and we see your second selection is uh, a Philly that I'm very interested in hearing your reasons <laughs> why you like her. Okay. And that's number two, never sway. Notice that Mike Smith gets on her back. She has three career wins, two of them here on this main track and two at this distance. What is it about Never Sway that you like? Well, one of them is what you, what you mentioned, uh, Mike Smith. Mike Smith, you don't see, especially at this stage in his career, riding a bunch of claiming races, especially 12 5. His agent, Brad Pegra, must have got a hell of a story for Mike to get on her back. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm willing to take a shot. At six to one, and Mike Smith's enough for me. No doubt about it. She's very, very, very interesting. If you look at the internal fractions from her race in Los Alamitos, they also chart very well, even with the slight bump up in class. But nevertheless, uh, Ryan thinks race eight falls down to number three and number two. Race number nine, back on the turf course. This is a starter allowance race. We've got a field of eight after the scratch of number five, Aurelian Man, morning line favorite number two, Big Hat Willie, a three-year-old tackling older, first time on the turf course. You also have a, a, a ride in here, Ryan, for number seven, Big Coop, who's coming back off a long layoff. Let's first talk about Big Coop. Have you been on uh, on his back in the morning? He is one we have, yes. Worked him quite a few times. He's been working well. Um, coming coming back off a 23-month layoff is never easy, but his numbers prior to going out are good enough to win here. So if he can come back at that level, I think he'll be he'll be another one that'll be com competing today. And, and the pedigree is there. He's a half to Margo's boy who earned close to $200,000 in uh, that horse's career. We see that you like uh, Big Coop on top, but you also like number two, Big Hat Willie, first time turf. Why is that, right? He's won at the same level, two, two out of his last three starts. He's trying turf today, but I don't see why he can't handle the turf. He's got Decent turf pedigree. Pete Miller is usually pretty good with that switch. Um, and it's not the toughest starter allowance bunch. So I don't see any reason why he can't make the switch over to turf today. As we get closer to the end of the year, and we're still about two and a half months away, Ryan, it's usually the time of year when everybody starts to set objectives, both personally and professionally. Have you and Diego talked much about what your goals are going forward, whether it's, you know, to win, whatever it might be? Just tell me if you guys have had those discussions. We have had this, this, those discussions. Um, obviously, you don't want to set too lofty a goals to where you don't reach them and you're disappointed. But we want to continue to improve, continue to work hard, you know, get the right opportunities, um, ride for the right barns as, as well as, you know, just anyone else. But you want to you want to get your foot in the door with some of the top barns. So you get opportunities for them and, and people pay attention. Well, I know I speak for our entire audience where we're wishing both you guys nothing but the best of luck. Race number 10, we're back on the main track, one mile of the distance, allowance optional claiming types, non-winners of one other than a field of nine in the morning line favorite on the bottom is number nine, Stat My Passport, a very talented calbred uh, 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 gelding, I should say, tackling open company. Uh, five to two on John White's morning line. No, no mount for you in this race. Talk to us about race 10, Ryan. So this was a race I decided I wanted to take a little bit of a shot. I don't know what kind of price will be come post time, but he's six to one on the morning line. I like the seven, Smart Mo. I love his race here. He ran huge. It's the best race of his life. We ran a 94 buyer, broke his maiden on debut, which you don't see happen for John Sheriff's a ton. I think that kind of says quite a bit about the Colt. 
they tried them in stakes company next time didn't fare so well then they tried turf again not a terrible race but not great so they took them back to stakes company a mile on the dirt ran third and i like to see him back over santa anita today you also give a little look to vladimir Sarin's runner on the rail number one ghazali what do you like about ghazali the thing I like about Ghazali is he's he's a horse that I think a mile hits him right between the eyes. I think his two races for Vladimir at a mile, I mean, he's got the one win here, one by two and a half with Aguilar, and then his last race was uh, Del Mar, and he ran second to two, river, two rivers over. So Vladimir and, and Hector have been clicking. I think he's one that We'll sit a good trip. He'll be forwardly placed too, and I think he's going to be a fair price. So. Question, question for you, Ryan. For your top pick, number seven, Smart Mo. You mentioned the buyer speed figure of ninety-four mm -hmm. that he earned on debut. Do you also use besides buyer speed figures, thoroughgraphs and or ragazins? And if you do, what type of advantages does that give you as a as as a, a jockey agent? I do use the rags. I don't use thoroughgraph. Um, I'm a believer in the rags, so I think anyone who uses them, it gives you an advantage because it gives you the availability to see things that you can't see in the form and you can't see um, and any other handicapping. Give us tool. one example. So usually when you look at the form and you see a horse with high buyers, they're generally going to be one of your top two choices for the most part. When you look at the sheets, you could have a horse that has the best sheet that could be third, fourth, fifth choice in a race. So that in a small in a small uh, small time frame to talk about it. That's one thing that it does. And they are accurate and they are reliable. Going back to that source of information from before, you have so much uh, knowledge of the sheets that you totally rely on their numbers simply because you've seen how successful you've been in the past. It, it's something. It's a tool where it's like you can't pick and choose because when you pick one day you could be right and pick another you're wrong so you kind of just need to either choose to believe in them and use them or or stay away you're either all in or all out race yep. number 11 we close out the day uh going one mile on the turf course for twenty five thousand dollar claimers one scratch scratch the nine perfectionist leaves us with a field of nine number 10 boaster is a first time yelling number three overdue who we haven't seen in a couple months from the field of motto barn is the five to two morning line favorite give us a winner to close it out right well, I'm going to go with the first off the claim eight, Tiz Plus. He's a horse that had been running very, very well um, at the allowance level for quite some time for Pipey. They dropped him last time at Delmar. He got the job done. He was claimed. O'Neill has him. They put him back in for 25 today. I think at this level, he, he's going to hit pretty hard. Um, DeSormo actually doesn't ride back. He goes to the seven, who would be my second choice. He just ran second at the level. And First off, the claim for Hess. I love I love DeSormo and Hess when they team up. Eight and seven to close out an, an outstanding 11 race card. We'll, we're going to have another 11 race card tomorrow. Similar concept. First post will be 1230. That means the seminar starts at 1120. want to thank all of you for watching, Ryan. I want to thank you as well. You're a young rising star, and I wish you nothing but the best of luck and success going forward. Thanks for your time and insight today. Thanks for having me. Thanks to all of you for watching as well. Next voice you hear will be track announcer Frank Miramati updating us with any late program changes. Have fun today, everybody here at Sanita. Make some money.